What's the word, y'all? I have been extremely impressed with the 2022 NBA draft. For reference, I don't watch college ball, G League ball, overtime elite ball. Like, I am a almost strictly NBA watcher. But that's true. I'm trying to change that. I have a series idea in mind, but it's it's been hard to really put it together. I need a cameraman in Illinois like a, a, a dedicated cameraman so if you're in illinois with maybe a little bit of experience or maybe no experience i mean hit me up i know this is gonna open the floodgates to 10,000 applicants but i need a dedicated film guy so i can do some vlogs at different events anyway i'm normally an nba guy so my experience with these players are like a couple weeks before the draft i might do a little bit of research because we usually some, do some type of work around it and then my real first impression is summer league and of course they carries on throughout the course of their career remember it's already been 30-ish games of their career so i might be overreacted to some underreacted to others because some people that might not impress for the first 30 games of their career might turn out to be stars you never really know and the last 24 to 48 hours we've seen some really big performances from some people in this class so let's just talk about some of these people the ringer today dropped an article about Paolo mccaro and his foul drawing ability i mean he's in an elite class like he's right here behind some of the he he's averaging more free throw attempts than demar Derozan. that that is something i haven't read this article completely but i mean if you could just look at the stats if you if you don't re do no reading just look at the graphics this man Paolo is up there with blake griffin shaquille o'neal michael jordan and david robinson when it comes to free throw attempts as a rookie which is insane i mean all you got to do is watch one orlando magic game and you'll see that this man is head and shoulders above the competition when it comes to his class so we're gonna not gonna spend a lot of time on Paolo because i mean if you want Paolo content you got this and he was on old man in the three this morning i haven't watched this just yet and completely but um if you want Palo content, it's, it's there. Also, the Ringer dropped this article. I'm not, I seem like I'm a huge Ringer guy. I promise you. I'm just I'm just out here searching for content. It's 2020 an all-time bad draft class. Um, and I haven't read it just yet. But even if you just look at this, I, I mean, you can see the top three guys. Oh, two of the top three guys have been super productive. I watched James Wobby, your wise man yesterday against the Knicks. And, oh, boy. Um, but like four through ten. Of course, you're getting bright spots on P. Will every once in a while and Yekka Kong. Like, there are bright spots in all these players. But obviously, compared to some of the other draft classes, the top 10 draft draft picks, only two of them turned out to do anything so far. But also remember, progression is not linear. And there are some people outside of the top 10 that are killing the game. So I don't want to overreact. I will read this article eventually. But but I'm going to give the 2020 drafts a little bit of leeway. Because anytime I defend Patrick Williams, this is my excuse. And I do believe it's it has something to do with it. In 2020, they got drafted during a season of no contact. There was, there was no draft. There was no summer league. There was nothing. These people got drafted and immediately went to go play NBA ball. And some of them taking advantage of it. Majority of them haven't. So, you know, I think we should judge the 2020 draft class a little bit differently than the others because it might take them a little bit longer to pop. But let's get back to 2022 because, yeah, Tyrese Halliburton, Emmanuel Quickly, Desmond Bain all came from 2020 and all of them have been having productive NBA careers so far. Is that it? Yikes. All right, let's get to the 2020 draft. And remember, we're talking about this draft class without the number two overall pitch, Chet Holmgren even playing. And, of course, I was there in Summer League watching his first games as a pro and he was he was elite whether it be in salt lake city or the little bit of time he spent in vegas he was elite now would that have translated over to the nba where the bodies are bigger and stronger i don't know but still he looked really damn good but like jabari smith jr also just because i don't talk about a prospect specifically in this video don't mean i think he's buns or i don't i don't enjoy his game it's just the sake of time so jabari was averaging about 12 points per game seven rebounds a little under and a assist and then shooting 37 percent from the field which obviously is not very good but when i watched the the houston rockets i see the vision behind him i do think the shots eventually will start falling he's getting a ton of looks i mean I, there was a little bit of conversation around whether or not kevin porter jr and Jalen green get this man looks but if you look at how open he is on average he, he's one of the most open players in basketball when it comes to his shots and i think eventually those shots will start falling but i mentioned this about a week and a half ago i'm very impressed with his defense and i think eventually once the orlando not the orlando the houston rockets become a competent defensive team he will stand out more for his defensive efforts because some Sometimes you can see that he, not sometimes, majority of the times when he is on the floor, he is undoubtedly the best player on his own team in his own five. And eventually, the shots will start falling. Eventually, some of the other people around him will start to develop as well to become plus defenders. And then you're going to really see the impact of Jabari Smith Jr. I've already seen so many people out on him based on 29 games of his career. I can't go that far. Just because a shot doesn't fall, it doesn't mean there's not things to be excited about. Keegan Murray is one of the people in this draft class that when I watch, he doesn't feel like a first-year player. He does not feel like a rookie. He immediately came in and felt like a seven, eight-year vet. He very rarely makes mistakes. 
and the defense is dramatically better with him on the floor, which is something you do not see and or hear when it comes to rookie players. I, I mean, especially when it comes to top five picks, because traditionally top five picks end up being on really bad teams. Obviously, the, the Sacramento Kings are not a bad team at all, but when he is on the court, the defense is dramatically better. And again, as a guy that doesn't watch any college ball or anything, um, a couple <laughs> a couple days ago, his twin brother dropped some crazy stat line. And I woke up to see the stat line and was very confused because I didn't know he had a twin brother. So he does. So he's averaging 12 points per game, four rebounds, about a little under an assist per 43% uh, from the field. But the best thing about it, 38-ish percent from three in the last 10 games, 45% from three. We knew he was going to shoot. I think the defense is a little more advanced than I even anticipated. And he's been a, a crucial, crucial part to the Sacramento Kings being one of the better teams in the league. Jaden Ivey had his first 30-point game of his career yesterday. And th that was also one of the catalysts for this video because I was watching that game. And two things stuck out to me. I guess three things stuck out to me. The number one thing is I still can't believe how good Larry Marketing has been this season. He would look very good in the Bulls jersey. Um, He would look very good in the Bulls jersey. Okay, I don't have the stats to prove this because I don't even know. When people talk about second spectrum, how do I get second spectrum stats? Because I be listening to podcasts per second spectrum 60% uh, of the time when he does a pick and roll that people go under. Whenever I watch Jaden Ivey, it seems like when he's running the pick and roll with whoever, the defenders are going under because they don't trust his jump shooting just yet. And in yesterday's game, he stepped into a lot of shots and he hit them. He would step into a nice mid-range jump shot because the defender was so sunken under. And he had one move on um, uh, Mike Conley, made him look foolish. And I was extremely impressed with what he was doing. That was the second observation behind Larry Market to be a great. And the third one, since we're here talking about it, Jalen Duran. Whoa. Um, they got it. They, they got it. The man is breaking records. The man is breaking records. He, I mean, I'm not giving no advice or whatever, but I will say of the last five Detroit Pistons games that I have played prize picks with, I have hit the Jalen Duran rebounds, and he he takes them. He's gobbling all the boards. And you know what I like about their team? Obviously, they're missing Kay Cunningham, um, which is a big spark to their watchability. When they are going... They like to do a little showboat, a little bit of talking. I mean, of course, you got Isaiah Stewart on the team who ain't afraid nobody. So they're going to do a little bit of talking. Jay Ivey throw a little pass to um, Jalen Duran, and 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 they, he's dunking the ball, and they're doing airplanes down the court. Like, they're a fun watch with some super cool jerseys. Jalen Duran is very excited. I remember maybe a week into his career, there's another YouTuber um, that does NBA stuff, mostly draft stuff. They would say, hey, that, that 13th overall pick for Jalen Duran. Video. I don't know why... I continuously say Jalen Duran. It's Duran. I, I don't even know how it's possible that I think it was the Charlotte Hornets they drafted him and ended up trading him to the Knicks and the Knicks traded him to whatever. He was saying, I don't understand how so many teams had him in their hands and decided to ship him off to Detroit because he's that nice. They were saying he could, he's a Dwight Howard-esque player, not to the not to the elite level superstar that Dwight Howard was in his prime, but high energy, gets some rebounds, blocks some shots, and does great things. And it's like smaller. He's a, he's a big guy, but like shorter um stature and i see it bro and him and isaiah stewart playing together if they're deciding that that is their front court of the future it's exciting stuff because isaiah stewart is hitting shots and of course the defense between the two of them is going to be pretty good eventually once they continue to learn the game so i i really like the draft class so far for um the P detroit pistons and with k being a former first overall pick who looked like a stud and with them eventually getting another top three top five pick this season here they come. Benedict Mather is not a lot to say right now because we've made videos about Benedict Mather. Even though he has slowed down after that super, super hot first month of the season, he's still uh, playing quality minutes and, and still fearless when it comes to the sport of basketball. So, again, if you want to hear me talk about Ben Matherin, you can go watch some other videos. Shaden Sharp, Dyson Daniels, Tari Eason. Those are three guys that are basically fit into a role on their team. I'm seeing a lot more of Tari Issa, which is dope because he was my favorite prospect after watching four minutes of footage of him at LSU. I was like, oh, this is the type of player I really like. But they've all fit into a role in the early starts of their career because Shaden Sharp is playing with a Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons team who's who's really solid right now. So, of course, he's not going to get the opportunity as some of the other ones, but he has made the most of the opportunities that he's got. I mean, he's a human highlight reel already. He's only played 30-ish games of his career. Really love his game. Um, it's still... I 
still haven't seen enough of it to give like a deep dive or this is what he's good at this is what he's bad at but i will say when he is on the court you can feel his impact and i say the same thing about dyson daniels earlier in the season he was getting dmp's coach's decision and then a couple knickknack injuries herb jones is out brandon ingram is out and, and now you need to rely on this young dude and he's averaging five and a half points per three and a half assists or three and a half rebounds two assists I, the, the impact that is Dyson Daniels is not showing up on the stat sheet. He is a hard-nosed 101 defender that is, what, 19 years? He was born in 2003. That's how young NBA players are. 2003? And I can say this thing about, thing about Tari Eason. It's not going to be shown on the actual individual stats, but instead it's about their defense. And Tari Eason's case is a lot about his energy and the, the ability to— Tari Eason just jumps every pass a lane and everything he does all of those little things that you care about and like a dude that's probably going to be a rotation piece may not be a superstar but a really quality pick and now it's got to the point where like of course the pelicans are still missing brandon ingram and stuff but i will find it extremely extremely hard for willie green to be like oh dyson now you're going back to getting dmp coach's decision because that's how impactful he is on the defensive side of the ball and we got him and jose alvarado together i don't know if the stats prove this or anything but that's an annoying ass too to start the go against if I'm a guard. And then we get to Jeremy Sohan. Jeremy is, I don't want to say my favorite prospect in this draft. He he's he's definitely up there. Mostly because he is so bare bones. And the last, I don't know how many games if, that I've watched of the San Antonio Spurs, they run him more as a primary ball handler. Now, some teams have this thing where anytime they draft a bigger dude that can handle a little bit immediately he's he's turned into the point guard immediately we're gonna give him an opportunity to run pg and and in my opinion it i can't say it hurts development but it just always doesn't work and i'm not saying that the jeremy sohan minutes at point guard is working but i understand it if that makes sense i i don't know if jeremy's a gonna be a lead guard in his future but i i see it i, I do want to say his passive accuracy Maybe not as good as you would want from a lead ball handler, but it's a, it's a San Antonio Spurs right now. We got nothing to lose, so let's let him develop these, these things. And he's another guy, similar to Dyson Daniels, where his defense is really up there. Like, I would not be surprised if we're four years down the line and Jeremy Sohan is one of the more elite on-ball defenders, or not just on-ball, just defenders in general at the wing positions. You know, and I'm seeing that those glimpses right now where he's in the help and he's gobbling up everything, blocks, steals, all of that stuff, and just overall great help defender. The jump shooter still has a lot to be desired, but I watched the game against the Houston Rockets a couple days ago where he did like a out-of-a-post-up, face-up, mid-range jump shoot and leaning. I don't know if that's him. But if he can start to develop that, I'm just saying. Jalen Williams doesn't do anything wrong. 12th overall pick. And we talk about the Jalen Williams with Santa Clara. And you know what I mean? Like, I think that a lot of the upper class players just come in more ready. I mean, it makes sense. They're older. But, like, they come in more ready than some of the other ones. Because you don't draft Jalen Williams mostly on potential. You draft them based on his production. And not saying he doesn't have potential to be something great eventually. But him being older and a little bit more experienced, you can definitely see that. And I say the same thing about Christian Brown, who had a really good game last night against the Memphis Grizzlies. They're just these upper classmen that seems like they really, really make mistakes. Now, they might not go out there and drop 30 but they really make mistakes when it comes to rotational players at least for like a denver nuggets type team that is trying to compete those are the type of people you want um i was actually surprised to see Jalen williams go this high at 12 because he was an upperclassman for the okc thunder but it makes sense it, when you think about the okc Th thunder's construction right now it makes sense and then you got the people that don't really get pt like mark williams who haven't really touched an nba floor just yet or Usman Dang, who um, played a little bit, had a really good game against, I don't remember who, he had like four threes and then got injured right after that. But like, these are people that were in the lottery that, that haven't seen the court much, and I don't have an opinion. Or Johnny Davis. Don't have an opinion on Johnny Davis. He hasn't played basketball yet. And then we get to like second round picks, like Andrew Nimhar. You saw him at the big shot against the Lakers or whatever. Um, really good pick up there. Caleb Houston has got a lot of minutes in Orlando because they've been struggling to stay healthy. Christian Coloco started majority this season. Max Christie um, hasn't got a ton of opportunity, but he is now with the injuries that are going on with the Lakers. But I don't know how I just went that far, that far without talking about Walker Kessler. 
I picked up Walker Kessler at Fantasy Basketball maybe two weeks ago. The One of the best waiver wire free agency fantasy basketball pickups I could have. Man, we play nine cat for some reason. I'm in a league with my through the wire boys. I'm in a league with uh, Pick a Side. And I'm in a league with a six man show. Three great podcasts, by the way, if you want to go check them out. Shout out to, to the guys. And Walker Kessler was sitting there. And I was like, you know what? Kelly Olenek is going to be out with an injury for a little bit. Let me go pick up Walk. I mean, block shots get boards 100 percent from the field normally you know what i'm saying those are the type of stuff you're getting from walker kessler and remember he's a sophomore year player and a lot of people question whether or not he would have the foot speed to hang at the nba level and i don't really trust him on switches on guards but when it comes to that painted area he's in he's a year two player. He's already one of the more elite straight up shot blockers in basketball what did i just say he's a two-way player he's a year one player um he's, he's one of the best primary shot blockers in all of basketball so you know, some other people that I haven't seen a ton of but are interesting is, of course, Nikola Jovic, Jake LaRavia, um, and, and David Roddy. Both of these dudes in and out of the rotation over there in Memphis because they just have so many bodies. that like, if somebody goes out, okay, now we have you play. And, I'll be, you know what I'm saying? So, um, again, just an impressive-ass draft class. And I, I'm extremely excited to do the same video a year from now because the way people are talking, the next year's draft class is the one that pick 1 through 60. All of them going to be superstars. Um, so, let me know out of this 2022 NBA draft class who has been most impressive to you. And I'll be in that comment section as always.